Tonight on Country Squire Radio, oh, it's going to be a good one. Squire Select, baby. We got, we got the whiskey. We got the bourbon. We got the scotch that's not supposed to be scotch, but we'll talk about that. We got a lot of good stuff. We've, and pipe tobacco. And pipe tobacco. <laughs> that's what we'll be doing. We'll be pairing up the whiskey with the pipe tobacco. Uh, we've also got a pipe question of the week, which should be interesting because John David doesn't know what it is yet. We also have got some quick fire questions, listener feedback, and more happening right now on Country Squire Radio. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John Davis. JD. Hey, Bo. Good evening, man. man. Good evening to you. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great, man. Trying to recover from a long weekend. It was uh man, it was kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah, you know, our uh, our intern, Caleb, he's uh he, he's jumping the broom, man. I know. He's right? getting married. Yeah, just like, a couple like of weeks here. Tomorrow. No, not tomorrow, but 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 just in a couple sometime. of weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh when this show comes out uh, uh for our listeners on iTunes, he'll he'll be getting married just over a week. So uh, man, it's exciting. You know, uh, he, he, you know, he, if you've listened to Country Squire Radio long enough, you know, we're not the crazy types. You know, we don't want to, no. uh, we don't go overboard typically with almost anything. No. Uh, except y'all, good, now you except guys on pipe the other hand. And, uh, Y'all, y'all, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we got to watch y'all. We see you on but, Twitter. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Caleb, a couple months ago, he asked me if, uh, you know, he could put, if I would put together just a little bachelor night for him where he could kind of go have some fun and, uh, you know, just, just get into a few things as long as it was uh, legal uh, moral and something that he wouldn't be shamed of talking about later. Um, Interesting. And I so, am very curious to know what you came up. Yeah, with. yeah, no, it was great. It was great. We, uh, yeah, we went to went to the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and uh, man, they've got huh. this really. Uh, there's a lot of casinos down there, right? So, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, in our state, uh, obviously, in an attempt to get a lot more revenue, uh, uh, years and years ago, they allowed casinos on the Gulf Coast part of the state. They got to be floating though, right? Well, they did until oh, her right. until Hurricane Katrina. Right. And, and then when Katrina came, it destroyed all the floating casinos and the, the legislature passed this bill. They were like, eh, you can make a casino, <laughs> but just build it right on the water, you know? So, right, right, right. I mean, the, the, the boats that they were on were a sham anyway, right? It's oh, yeah. Like a, it, it looked it, like a boat, but underneath like a boat, it was like, you yeah. Know, no, I mean, it was, it was a, it was a, barge a stationary <laughs> barge that you know where you know thousands of people gambled so uh, but anyway we went down there and and uh they had this one this one place it was like a uh, an adult arcade a, 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 bar, a barcade if you will a barcade and, and and so imagine this uh imagine this huge arcade area i knew caleb like video games oh and, big time yeah. uh you know that kind of thing and so we went down there stay the night and they had uh you know if you could imagine like three bars on the edge of a chuck e cheese <laughs> And 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 uh-huh. so just like all these like animatronics, you know, rock climbing, and there was a ropes course and lots of uh, oh wow okay uh, you know uh, shooter games and I mean you know they <laughs> had they had pool tables and stuff too but like it was just it was just a, a awesome arcade for like grown people yeah it, yeah, it was yeah. great and yeah. we, we just we just did it up man it rock was fun. rock climbing what was the other one. Yeah, the rock climbing shooter games and the uh, and, and, and pool table pool tables. Okay, yeah. okay. Gotcha. I mean, you know, it was just it was just fun. It was just good. No, that good, sounds fantastic. Good games, man. We played. Uh, we shot zombies with crossbows. We played space invaders. We <laughs> uh, we fell off rock climbing walls and um, we made fools of ourselves. Uh, you know, pretending like we knew how to, you know, race go karts. I mean, it was, it was it was great. Oh man, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. So anyway, I'm congrats to Caleb. Uh, you know, the intern here just in a couple weeks getting married. And, I was gonna say uh, he hadn't done it yet. Man, I don't know. I know we're so congratulations until he actually. No, that, does that it. I know that's right. We're that's supposed right. to we're supposed to you know hold him hold him accountable down the aisle. What, you know, what so did someone ask the other day? Maybe I mentioned this on the air. They they didn't ask me uh, who my groomsmen were. They asked me who my pallbearers were. <laughs> 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 like that's pretty that, clever. That that's is pretty uh, clever. So Ca- Caleb, uh, unfortunately, you know, he asked me to be one of his uh, one of his pallbearers. So <laughs> anyway, I was proud to put that together for him. We had a we had a good time down there, man. It was a lot of fun. Man, that sounds awesome. What, what's going on with you, man? Oh, you know, I, <laughs> this, uh, uh, you know, so that, that sounds awesome. Yeah, while, while you were doing that, I was at home sick with a, uh, a two year old. Ah, just another weekend at the York House. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, that was kind of our deal. Actually, we my, my wife and I we were really excited. Um, we we actually. We're, we're allowed some kind of time, just the two of us. We were really yeah. excited for the kids were going over to uh, my parents' house. Yes, yeah, so y'all and, took a nap. <laughs> and well, well, so that's the thing. That was the plan. Except, you know, as as soon as literally we pull into my parents' house, here you know, the, the the oldest gets out, then the two year old. Yeah. We pick her up, and as soon as my wife picks her up, 
Blah. Oh, oh man. All over the place. Oh. And so then it's like, all right, well, date night's off. So. This is <laughs> this is the reason we have date night. Right. Because exactly. to get away from stuff like this. Exactly. But uh <laughs> but no, man, it was uh, it was good, a lot of good family time. Um, you know, got a chance to go and uh, and see, you know, the Christmas lights are starting to pop up yeah, all over the here, place. Here and there, they really are. Yeah. Got the Christmas tree this weekend. So uh man, it's it's a fun time. It's I, a fun time. I, okay, did did you you got your Christmas tree. Did you put lights on your Christmas tree? We did. And this year we we did something a little bit different that we haven't done in the past. Normally we've gone for like, you know, we, we've kind of messed around a little bit. You got the classic Christmas tree lights that are kind of the thin little ones that like if you don't have it exactly right, then half of them die. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you got the classics. Right. One year we tried to go LED and I, I think LED has progressed as a technology, but back then, sure. by going LED, we turned our Christmas tree into like a rocket ship. Like <laughs> you could see it from outer space. It was like, it was not good. But this year, man, we actually went with those, uh, kind of those outdoor lights, you know, the kind that you kind of hang down and they look like balls and everything. It's like, oh like, yeah. Kind of the yeah, like lights. the uh, uh, bistro lights. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, but, but ball shaped and everything. And man, it looks really good. It came out good. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's only like slightly a fire hazard, but it looks really, really okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> well, it, 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 the future uh, Mrs. Cole and I uh, went tree shopping last weekend. Really? Uh, even though um, you know we sh we're not married yet, she doesn't live with me yet. We're like, oh, we'll go get a tree and try to make my house look like an adult lives here. And so we went and got a tree, uh, and and the dog has only successfully almost knocked it over about three times. Oh so, snap! So P Penny has uh, if Penny gives it her seal of approval, where you know, she can scratch her rear end on it and it and it doesn't fall over, then I feel like that has accomplished something good. Has Penny yeah. never seen a Christmas tree? Before? No, we've had Christmas trees in the past. Okay. You know, it's just it, it's one of those things like it you just never know what to expect. I mean it, it to her it's just a giant back scratching device. <laughs> that that's literally all it is. Yeah. Man. It's uh, it's great. We have not put a single light on the tree yet though. That's how busy it's been. So well uh, we're we're hoping to do that uh within the next couple of days, we we hope. And uh hopefully we'll, you know, get to Christmas lights and ornaments before the uh, before the, the big day comes. Dude, Christmas trees decorated up is great. You know, I, I'm envisioning in my head that the, what you really need is kind of like uh, ornaments in the shape of pipes. Maybe maybe even like custom corn cob pipes that have been turned oh, yeah. into Christmas tree ornaments. No, that's right. That's right. Just throwing that idea out there. Of course, we do have our holiday custom cob competition coming up. Um, we've been talking about the last couple of episodes, but if you'd like to participate, there is still time. Uh, buy yourself a Missouri Mirror Pipe, customize it in whatever way you want to. Uh, the only rule is, uh, well, only one rule. There's a lot of rules, but not a lot of rules. There's enough rules so that it's regulated, but not so much that it's confusing. Yeah, that, it, that it's stuffy. Yeah. One entry per person. All pipes must be smokable, and con uh, contestants need to send their pipes here to the Country Squire by December 15th. Yeah, so, we got, you know, we got our first submission today. All right. We man, did. Yeah. yeah. It was great. So it was, several people have mentioned to us they're working on them, they're almost ready. Uh, a couple people have said they're even on the way, uh, but we received at the shop here today our first our first submission. Don't show me. Don't so, tell me anything. I want to. No, I want to no, review just, on the. We're, we're going to go in. Yeah, we're going to go in blind on this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh it was, man, uh, it, it, it was great. I was really really happy to get that. So um, the the shop's address. If you're um, if you're you know got one planned or working on one, almost done with one, and want to ship it to us, it's eighteen fifty five Lakeland Drive, Suite B ten. Jackson, Mississippi, 39216. All right. Uh, and if you'll just uh, address it to the Country Squire, me, uh, when we in include some type of information in there, just letting us know what this is so we won't just get this random corn cob pipe and be like, <laughs> oh, well, that's awfully nice. Wish I knew who this came from. Yeah, we got to know who it's coming from. <laughs> got to know who it's coming from. But, uh, and give us some contact information, too. But, uh, man, we're um, actually going to... Uh, be able to give this to a good cause, right? That's uh, right. We're going to auction these off. Absolutely. All the details can be found on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash country squire radio. Uh, so uh, tune in there, check out all the details and yeah, let's, let's get those in. Yeah. Got it's a good, good, go. good way to uh, collaborate with our friends at Missouri Mearsham on, uh, on that. Absolutely. All right, man. So we got that coming up, but we also have new year's Eve as well, man. So we've got a, a big new year's show that we're doing kind of for the first time ever. Uh, we're doing a best of 2017 where we've asked uh, you guys to kind of uh, submit in like best, uh, best new blends, best tins, best uh, pipe tobacco or uh, tobacconist. Although John David has taken himself out of the running. Uh, so for all the information on that as well, it is avail available on Facebook. It's also available for patrons of the show. And uh, especially those of you who are our club members. Now, man, speaking of club members, we mentioned a couple weeks back that we were getting pretty close to a major milestone. This is crazy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it has happened. Joining at the Squire level, our 100th member. 
Everett Bradshaw. Woo! And you didn't even mess up his name. Watch it be Everate Bradshaw. I know, right? <laughs> like, like, but, but yes, I thought, you know, in honor of the 100th. Dude, you gotta... I know. Let's actually get it right. Dude, Everett, <laughs> man, thank you so much. You were you were the 100th club member that uh, that we've had at Country Squire Radio for our international uh, pipe club. We're so grateful uh, for you and for all the other folks that have uh, continued to make the club and, and the show possible um, gosh, it's just amazing. It's just, and, and what's amazing is he wasn't the only one. No, 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 no. But let's let's stay on Everett here for a minute because I feel like we got to give give you know give Everett his props. I yeah, mean, no, like, that's right. That's right. You know, you, you, the the one hundredth member. This is a huge milestone. You know, I wanted to do something special for this, and so I thought, okay, well, I'll get one of those like confetti poppers. But then you'd have confetti all over the the pipe shirt, the floor, and you know the fact that you yeah, because we'd hate to get the shop dirty. <laughs> well, if you had confetti and glitter everywhere after coming right back from a bachelor party, yeah, that people might, might have questions. Yeah, that might. Not no, look that, good. That, that makes sense. But then I thought, okay, well, we'll just stuff balloons underneath <laughs> us, and then like we'll press a button and they'll come up, kind of like we did for you know your your uh, your engagement and with the roses, and you know I had props for the live show there as well. Um, but when it was all said and done, we ended up having another member join between now and then. I thought, well, that was going to make things feel awkward for uh, new Squire member JD Tooney. Man, 101. 101. 101. That's it. That's it. JD, yeah. a, a good a good name, solid name. Um, yeah, it makes me think of the cartoonies that I used to watch when I was a kid. Yeah, I was, I was focused on the fact that his name was JD, but the, but yeah, oh. no, that's that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe he's the cartoon version of you. He might be, which is almost like an oxymoron, isn't yeah. it? Or, also, or like, no, no, it's it's that's redundant. A, a cartoon version of me. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, that, he might actually be the real you. He's a, he's just you're the toonie. He's a I'm I'm the toonie. You're the toonie. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, we're, we've got a lot of fun. By the way, of course, big thanks to all of you who are uh, club members. Uh, those of you who are, are actively joining, we're getting real close to the uh, the turn of the year here, which means that we'll be doing some plaques and some fun things up. Uh, so uh, big thanks to all of you. If you'd like to join the Pipe Club as well, uh, find out more information at CountrySquireRadio.com. Uh, there's a big banner that says join the club, or you can go to Patreon.com slash CountrySquireRadio to join there as well. All right, man, we have got a fun show tonight because this uh, it's always the most fun show absolutely it's the it's the most wonderful time of the year it is squire select <laughs> now squire select for those of you who are unfamiliar is where we take uh generally whiskeys now we've done some different things with squire select but generally whiskeys and we pair them with pipe tobacco uh, many of us we enjoy the spirits while we're enjoying our pipe uh before or after or sometimes even during and uh yeah tonight we are helping you figure out what is the best pairing when it comes to pipe tobacco and some uh, delicious brown water. Ah, the old brown water. Now, we got some fun ones tonight. This is good. This is good. So it, it, tonight, we're going to have a little fun. We're actually going to do two American single malt whiskeys. Uh, you think single malt? Well, that sounds like a scotch, right? Well, yeah. well, it, single malt, this is you know how whiskey is produced a certain way. Uh, it's the traditional way scotch whiskey is produced. And, and you can only call scotch whiskey, you know, scotch if it's made in Scotland. Uh, and so... Hmm. Um, you know, but but there are there are single malt whiskeys that are being produced now all over the world. Uh, the the most interesting uh, ones I've seen of late have been coming from Japan. Uh, Ooh, they're just real yeah. burgeoning, yeah, real high end whiskey market uh, that we're seeing uh, in the in East Asia. It's interesting, and, and folks in Japan are just really adopting it. But uh, but it, but it's starting to take the American market as well. And uh, you know, just as we've seen with uh, craft. Uh, craft bourbon, craft gin, craft vodka, uh, all in these small town American places across uh, across our country. We are now starting to see that with single malt whiskey, uh, which uh, can can be loosely translated into scotch. And so, oh, I like um, it. Yeah, man, it's just a lot of fun. We thought we'd uh, take a peek at a couple of those. And uh, man, these are both actually gifts from friends of Country Squire Radio. Is that right? Now uh, I knew which, one which of them, is, which is cool. Yeah, but both of them are. Um, and so, uh, and and one of them we've had uh, sitting at the shop a, a little bit uh, longer than the other one, and you'll be able to tell that very soon by looking at the bottle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, man, yeah. So a couple of a couple of great ones tonight. We're really excited about this. Is um, this is American Oak Westland? Uh, uh, it's it's Westland American Single Malt Whiskey. Wow. So so the distillery is uh, is Westland. It's from Seattle, Washington, um, and it is a hundred percent malted barley. Uh, uh, all all grown there in in the beautiful state of Washington. So, uh, ninety two proof. Uh, this is a you know it, about where you would expect a a, a scotch to kind of come in a, as far as the the uh, alcohol content goes. And I'll, I'll read the back just real quick. It says uh, this is the flagship malt um, 
and it's a core expression of the distillery's house style. Westland's American oak is a reflection of where it is made and the collective intent of those who made it. Uh, when we founded Westin Distil Westland Distillery, we had a vision for an entirely new category of whiskey distilled from rich, flavorful barley in Washington State and matured predominantly in new American oak casks in the steady, cool humidity of our seaside home. Um, all these choices uh, and ingredients conspire to create an approachable, mature, uniquely American single malt that can stand with the best whiskeys in the world. Um, interesting, interesting whiskey here. Uh, you know, a bourbon lover will feel right at home here. Ooh, yeah, that's and, me. And I like I like that because so many scotches, um, you know, people come to and they're like, yeah, you know, I just I I, I wish I like scotch. It seems like all these, you know. Uh, is, you know, people that know stuff about finer things, they like scotch, but I just, I don't care for it. There's just something there that's, uh, maybe it's too peaty or it doesn't have enough sweetness or, um, it's just, I don't know, a little too medicinal. Maybe this, uh, this Westland, uh, single malt is incredibly, uh, it is, it's approachable. That's how they describe it. And, um, it, it's almost like if, uh, if uh, one of our uh, favorite go-to scotches, Glenn Levitt, mm. uh, and and uh, maybe one of your favorite bourbons, kind of had a had a had a fling, and and the offspring that came from that fling were were this. That there's just enough bitiness to it, and and I think just enough sweetness to make you uh, feel like, oh, maybe there's maybe there's something there that would uh, would give the old bourbon lover. A, uh, something you know throw that person a bone interesting so, okay um it's made with five different barley malts um again all the barley is uh is from washington state um and uh and and they do call it you know approachable which i think is very uh very you know very key so um it, how about uh how about a how about a dram i was about to say uh, if, if it's so approachable would you like me to would you like me to keep quit talking i'm, and, I'm ready and, to and approach start it. and start sipping i know i'm curious as you're pouring this right here so this is uh so you said this was from a gift from a listener specifically that's right that's uh, so right. this was a gift to the to the to the show to the shop and the show okay I was but, about it to is, say. but it is a listener i was about to say because yeah, no, yeah, it, 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 like, it looks like maybe uh so we got to it a little early yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, uh, did the hurricane hit it before i got a chance it, to see actually it? the hurricane did not hit it other uh, because it's here right okay well, right touche <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 yeah because it, because it's here the hurricane uh, oh, hit you it. need something so hey, just, I, I'll, I'll i'll get it on the next round okay all right fair enough well cheers, cheers. <laughs> All right, so full disclosure, I actually had a little bit of the uh, the other one prior to this one, uh, which is going to be a pretty big gear shift when we yeah, get there. Yeah, it will. It, it will. This is really good. I mean, like you said, I mean, I could definitely, uh, uh, it speaks to the, the bourbon lover in me. Yeah. Man, it is crazy, though, because like... <laughs> it I, I totally killed my taste buds by drinking the other one by drinking the other one, one. <laughs> because it was so ro so robust and, and strong and unique so um and, and this one is decidedly uh lighter it, it, it is you know and actually even uh, by its own admission uh you know the folks at at westland they call this uh lemon citrusy uh the distillery even says uh it has uh notes of a uh, waffle cone, which I think is interesting. And, uh, you know, on a clean palate, you really can taste these kind of soft, uh, you know, uh, they call it waffle cone. I'm thinking kind of a toasted vanilla almond flavor. Uh, and that, that really does come through, but th there's a lightness to this that is really nice. And I, again, I think some of our, uh, listeners that like a smoother bourbon, something that is uh semi-sweet, but also enjoy kind of the, um, you know, the sharpness or the, um, the peatiness of a, of a scotch. I think, yeah. I think there's something here that they can, they can really enjoy. I mean, I do almost feel, I mean, there's, there's, there's literally nothing offensive about this. Yeah. Like it's just a, it's, it's incredibly it's simple. Very, yeah. very good, simple uh, drink. You know, I think about, there's a lot of people that are kind of scared of scotch. This might be a kind of a good way to kind of no, it, dip their toes exactly. in the right direction. That, and that, yeah. that kind of was, was my thought on that. You know, again, the, the bourbon lover, someone that likes a, likes a sweet American style whiskey, you know, they're, they're, they're going to find something here. I think that they can approach and, and really enjoy. So, um, you know, it, whether you get waffle cone or not, that, uh, as, as the folks at, uh, Westland says it, uh, waffle cone that, uh, devolves into creme brulee, custard, Ooh. chocolate, and almonds. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, we, you know, they, we they might the, be reaching on that. We, we, we read the bottom, the back of these wine bottles regularly. Right. And it's just like, <laughs> Oh, it smells like, you know, it toasted cherry with the side of my, inside of my grandmother's purse yeah. and you know with the, the bright tuscan sun you can actually taste the rays as they went straight 
through the grape leaves. And yeah, smell. the lavender that's been soaked in, you know, mm. vinegar oil or some crap. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's like at some point, just, you know, just tell me that it's a red wine, right? <laughs> so but, interesting. Well, but I, mean, I, I, think, if, I think this is really, really good stuff. If this is my waffle cone, what am I, uh, what am I putting in it? Yeah. So, the, so the, what you're putting in your waffle cone, I, I like this pairing. Um, you know, what we've done here is we've provided something uh, that's just a little, uh, a, l- a little sweet, but typically, you know, the tobaccos that come from this country taste very nat, or this company tastes very natural, um, and uh, and are well done aromatics. This is uh, this is sweet vanilla honeydew, and it is from Dan Tobacco. So um, I-, I love all the stuff from Dan Tobacco. This you know Dan Tobacco made in Germany. They make all this real quirky tobacco. You see, uh, you know the. Um, weird plug tobaccos they come out with and you know they've got the old favorites like bill bailey's and gordon pym and uh but but the sweet vanilla honeydew you have to look real closely even to know who this is made by because they uh just kind of uh you know show uh i, I don't know you just uh they, they just on all their tobaccos they you kind of that their their brand name is almost like an afterthought it's really interesting i mean but, you know, there's so much text that goes on to most tobacco tins no, that's anyway. right yeah you don't really right. know what's branding what's forced and what's otherwise yeah and so you know the way that they actually that's have a good their, way to put it actually. yeah yeah the way they have theirs on there it looks almost like um you know that that literally text that you you almost instinctively overlook no that's right i think so um yeah so it says a a fine blend of bright and sweet virginia delicately scented with smooth vanilla mm-hmm. so um I, i've been smoking this tonight really enjoyed it um it, this is as as you would expect from Dan Tobacco, um, even their aromatic tobaccos, this is it. It, it is a case or top tobacco, um, but it comes in the can very dry. And, and and sometimes on aromatics, you do appreciate that if you're coming at it from a non-aromatic standpoint, right? Mm. So so I'm a, you know typically folks that like a non-aromatic tobacco and they're like eh, I just feel like tasting something a little sweet tonight. You know they they might not want to dive all in on the um, you know, cherry syrup kind of tobacco or something like that. They might just want something a little more subtle. Um, and so it, when you think about it, for a scotch taster that's that's drinking the Westland American style malt whiskey, um, that that's kind of that's kind of what you're getting there, right? It's like a it's like a um, it's like a, a a single malt that has that uh, has just a little of that bourbon sweetness. What what Dan Tobacco has done here with the uh, with the sweet vanilla honeydew. Um, has given you basically a Virginia blend that's just a ready rubbed kind of chunky Virginia blend um, that's got a, a healthy dose of uh, just light, you know, of, of honey uh, and, and almond with a little vanilla. And so, um, yeah, just really nice. I, I like like this tobacco a lot. It makes a nice, soft, uh, aromatic for a for a slow, sippable smoke. So l- let me ask you this. Is dry aromatic? I mean, is that a German thing? Uh no, not necessarily German thing, but um, you know, the, I I think it's I'm not a big fan of dry. Tobacco. It's less it's less common. It's less common than uh than other aromatics. I think that's right. So it, it does have a very yeah. good tin note. I mean, like you you do yeah. it 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 hits you with the sweetness instantly. Yeah, that's right. It does. Uh, an, another another company that makes uh, a lot of tobaccos in this manner uh is um uh, is Villiger. Vill- Villiger. Uh, they had a tobacco we talked about in the early days of the show. Uh, 1888 midday that was real popular for a while. Villiger doesn't make uh, any of those uh, uh, daytime blends anymore, but um, but you do see this occasionally. The tobaccos that are uh, you know they're cased, but then they're they're thoroughly dried, and so it you know think about like for me particularly as a Virginia blend smoker, I like something that uh, is going to make you slow down. You ha- you really have to sip it to enjoy it. You have to nurse it to get the real flavors out. Puff it slowly, maybe. Uh, give it a soft dash of flame occasionally to get it re re stoked up, mm. um, you know, and and that goes really well uh, with with some aromatics like this one because it's uh, you know just kind of forces you to slow down a little bit. Again, it's a Interesting. yeah, it's a, it's just a different type of aromatic which uh, which I think uh, folks that uh, enjoy um, you know more li- more more uh, non aromatic tobaccos can really appreciate. So right. uh, yeah, so uh, sweet vanilla honeydew. Um, I don't taste any honeydew. Uh, in this tobacco, but you can but, certainly smell the vanilla. But you can certainly smell the vanilla, and uh, and it goes it goes well with uh, with the with the Westland American single. Malt. Yeah, you pack your vanilla yep. ice cream in your waffle cone. Yeah, that's right. That's it right. makes a lot of yeah. sense to me. Yeah, yeah no, that's right. <laughs> Followed up with some honey, dude. No, that's it. That's it. All right, man. So this next one that you're about to bust out here is really interesting because, as I mentioned, I, I had it 
before actually sampling the uh, the American oak here. Yes, you won't be able to taste anything else to, for the next week. Yeah, so that's the thing. <laughs> what what we're about to have is, you know it's from Texas because it just kicks you in the mouth. Ah, it's just bold. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just a very strong yeah, it's flavor. Robust. It's robust. It is strong. Yeah. Tell, tell them what Absolutely. we got. Absolutely. So, um, not exactly sure how you say this, but this was a gift uh, from one of our listeners at the Texas Pipe Show. Um and uh, it's something we finally cracked open and have, have really enjoyed. Uh, this is Balcones number no. one Texas single malt whiskey. It's the classic edition. Uh, if you type in uh, Texas single malt and the and the numeral one, uh, you'll be able to find it very quickly. Uh, just a real classic uh, bottle. Kind of looks like a, a Balvini bottle or uh, you know something like that. Uh, just real real classic simple bottle. Um, got a got a wax seal on the top of it, and this is a this is a product of Waco, mm. Texas. Um, and and it, it, again, it says a single malt whiskey. I'll read the back of it. Uh, all this stuff is small batch. It's even uh, hand printed on the back. The date that this was made, this particular one. Uh, was, I always love that kind was, of stuff. I, I, I'm just a sucker for that. Yeah, th this particular one was September 29th of 2016. Uh, so this has got about a year on it since it's gone in the bottle. But uh, Texas, Texas single malt is born. Uh, a timeless style of malt whiskey. Uh, Balcones number no. one Texas single malt breathes new life into centuries of distilling tradition with classic techniques and ingredients adopted for new world tastes. Opening aromas bear hints of toffee and overripe fruit. On the palate, layers of toasted malt and honey give way to mellow notes of baked pears and apples. I think that's very apparent, too. Um, a long finish is accompanied by cinnamon and cloves. Texas made, Texas proud, as of course Texans are. Uh, we hope you enjoy the whiskey we owe our success as much. Uh, let's see. We hope you enjoy the whiskey we owe our success to as much as we enjoyed making it. <laughs> Texans are proud. I always uh, found them to be very, very uh, humble uh, people. And it, but it's hard to know because you know you never. It's very rare that a Texan even ever tells you they're from Texas. It's no, that's that, like they're that trying is, to hide it. For that some is reason. that is true. Have I ever told you I was born in Houston? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we have discussed. This. Okay, I just want to make sure that's been covered. Yeah, yeah, it has. Yeah. It has. Okay. Although you, you, I feel like you are. You know, I'm joking. Of course, Texans are. <laughs> Wonderful people, and we appreciate all of you, especially those of you who <laughs> want to provide whiskey to the show. But, but, but you know, Texans are very proud of the fact that from Texas. But you, you don't, you don't really, um, you know, you, you come across as more Mississippi than Texas. Well, it, I've been here long enough to be self depreciating. Okay, all I, right, and it'll I think, do it to you. I Mississippi think, will do that, and, it, and it'll do it to you. You know, yeah. that kind of gets in your skin. You know, it, there's enough, uh, it, there's enough of that. You know, self deprecating. Uh, you know, humor, uh, inferiority complex thing that, you know, Napoleon syndrome, right? Sure. So I, I, you well, know, you went to state, so, you know, I, I did, I yeah, went to yeah, Mississippi yeah. state. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it, at some point, I don't know about football, but I know enough to, to know that, that if you went to state, you'd probably hate yourself a little bit in the football. Department. Wow. No, man, this is, this is good. We just got a new coach this week. Okay, this is a good week. Yeah. Things are, things are going well. It's yeah. It's all going to turn around. No, it's good. No, it's, it's all, 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 all going to get better. It's all, <laughs> it's all going to get better. That's right. That's right. Oh man. Yeah. So, um, Really, uh, really, really fun whiskey here. Uh, this is a, a, a pricier bottle. This is uh, anywhere you'll find it on the market from seventy dollars to one hundred and twenty dollars, depending on uh, where you live. Thing is, um, it just just really, uh, really, really good whiskey. Yeah, no, I mean, like that's the thing. It's it's worth every penny. And and uh, cheers. Yeah, cheers. I, we, we thank you very much. I didn't even talk about it. Oh. <laughs> I know. I wanted to start drinking it before. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Because it's really, really good. It's really good. Uh, it, you know, it, immediately right out of the gate, of course, the the uh, the distillery, they say uh, toffee and overripe fruits, uh, baked pears and apples, That uh, and, and the long finish with cinnamon and cloves. Uh, the, the, the baked fruit that, um, you know, what yeah. you might put into a, what you might, the, the, the type of fruit you might put into a pie before you add a whole lot of sugar. Like that's that's kind of that's kind of what I'm getting. That's here. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's kind of what I'm getting here. Kind of that naturally baked sugar, but not like sweet. Yeah, necessarily. Yeah, caramelized, but that's, not. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, you know, it's just a uh, just a real um, just a real soft kind of mealy uh, flavor. It's got uh, you know an, an uh, oaty texture to it. There's uh, immediately um, you know it coats your tongue with like this uh, you know sugar. You get uh, black cherry. Um, it, you know, it, uh, the cinnamon, I, I don't find as much. I do, I do think there's some clove here, but this is a really interesting, uh, drink. You know, it, it, it coats your mouth, uh, like I said, almost immediately. Uh, they ferment this, uh, this whiskey at a long time, longer than most, 
uh, single malts, and they do it at, at very low temperatures uh, just to get the flavors really rich. So um, not super familiar about the fermentation process when it comes to uh, to single malt whiskeys, but um, but that's that's what they say is they you know they uh, force it to sit in there for a little longer uh, and just at a little colder temperature to. Um, to kind of, you know, make it work for every ounce of flavor that it can. So um, what's what's fascinating here, in most, uh, in, in most uh, single malts that come from Scotland, for instance, um, you know, these are aged in American bourbon barrels, right? And it, it, a lot of folks find that interesting that scotch is aged in bourbon barrels. But, but that's, um, that's what happens. In, in, Even over in uh, the, old, the old Scottish place. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's that's right. So they wow. actually use bourbon barrels to to age scotch in, or you know, in, in most cases. But um, th- this is not done that way. It, it 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 has some American oak, but there's also this European and French oak uh, barrels that that have been um, you know mixed in here, and so it's going through a, it's getting a lot of different. Um, influences from a flavor profile. So, uh, you know, they have it, they put it through a variety. They're kind of nebulous on, (laughs) on what they say, you know, this goes through because they uh, obviously want you to know that, uh, you know, this is all proprietary stuff, but, but that it's very, uh, you know, very complex. And uh, you, you can just tell though, even when you drink the whiskey, that there's a lot at play here. Well, it's funny. So before we were recording, I, I, I had a, a little bit of a glass of this and, and it was right after I bit into one of these little cinnamon cakes you had. Yeah. And like I immediately was like, this, is it was it the cake that I just ate or is it this? Like what what's the apple? That's right. Like where's the apple? Coming That's right. From? That's right. Uh, and again, it kind of goes back to that baked fruit. If you can mm-hmm. imagine, um, you know, again, we're trying whiskeys here, single malts that are made in the United States. So, um, you know, a, a lot of these, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> a lot of these small batch whiskeys, uh, you know, again from the United States, they're going to have their own twist on it, right? Like how does a small time American manufacturer, um, you know. Uh, come out with something that is different, puts them on the map, that's unique, um, you know, and and so what what they've done here, I mean, obviously they want to stand out. They've they've made a, if you can imagine a single malt scotch, something that's full bodied, I mean, think of uh, maybe even Laphroaig or something, but then you have this kind of fruit element that comes in um, and doesn't take over, but is just a really nice augmentation to the to the smokiness. Man, I, I think yeah. it's I think it's just really solid. Yeah. I mean, what's more American than apple pie? I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Yep. By the way, shout out to uh, Randall Morgan, who's actually the one that hooked us up with uh, with this one from Texas, who's tuning in live. So thank you, brother. Cheers to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, man, it's so so good. We're glad you could glad you could join us. But um, man, yeah, and and thanks for the thanks for the bottle. It's just an incredible whiskey. We're we're so glad to have it. And um, I'm, go so, ahead. So Randall's at home right now. He's got bottles of this. He's probably drinking one right now, and he's wondering what he's supposed to smoke with it. Hey, well, and and what I'm pairing with it, and oh, and, yeah. and I'm particularly proud of this because uh, this is such a this is such a interestingly sweet single malt whiskey. You know, it's one that has, um, it, you know, it it it's got it's got sweetness, but it also has the Scotch uh, legs to it, right? It just kind of runs with it. So sweet and peat. Um, sweet, yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I wanted to wanted to pair this with something that I thought kind of brought brought you back down uh, home to earth a little bit, kind of centered you some. Um, so imagine, uh, you know, imagine, you know, if you went, if, for instance, with something this this unique, this bold, this rich, <laughs> you know, you, you could overdo your taste buds very quickly yes. with a with a, uh, a, a whiskey like this, right? You, you, could <laughs> you could really... You could burn them out completely right before doing a tasting. No, I, I, a I, I, I know, taste. I know. Like, like, like a random co-host of mine. Yeah, that, that's right. Whose name, uh, whose initials are Bo York. But uh, yeah, you know, it. you could overdo your palate really quickly with something like this. This is a it's very, uh, you know, rich, thick. It's a od flavor. There's lots of that baked fruit. And uh, it's just on and on about, um, you know, uh, just the superlatives here, and so we wanted to maybe pair it with something that would kind of, uh, kind of center us and and bring us home a little bit, uh, not overwhelm us, but just, uh, just add to the flavor here. And I picked a tobacco that we haven't talked about a lot on Country Squire Radio. Have we ever? We we have a, we have like once or twice, and it's always been in passing. Yeah. Okay, because I feel like I would have remembered this. Remember this particular one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is Dunhill Ye Old Sign, and uh, it's a dark Virginia blend. This is a re-release of theirs. Uh, it's just a just a fun tobacco. You know, you look at the tobacco and you're like, oh, look, it's got a, you know, a picture of I don't know what looks like Sir Walter Raleigh or something on it. You is know, that, just, is that not a Lafayette? Uh, uh, it it might be. 
I, I, I don't know who it is. Like, I, but, I see it instantly reminds me of Lafayette, of course, uh, Revolutionary War, uh, uh, you know, hero. Um, Man, you're such a such a history. Uh, <laughs> was such a history purist. Yeah, yeah that was. He was also a main <laughs> character in the hit musical Hamilton uh, on Broadway. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> but yes, history. That's right. H history. All of the histories. Uh, yeah. So D Dunhill, ye old signs, just such a. Uh, you know, of course, Dunhill Tobaccos, we know them and love them, and they have, um, I was about to say a cult following, but it's not a cult following. It's a it's very overt, loud, uh, proud following. Oh, but uh, there's a cult following yeah, as well. Uh, th there is that, too. I think they And if you're them. in it, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, wink, wink. Um, <laughs> the uh, the Dunhill Tobaccos, you know, you open the, uh, the coin-style, uh, vacuum-sealed style tin, uh, obviously, that they're known for. Uh, you know, all their tobaccos are going to be, Again, kind of in that uh, moisture range that's a little more uh, medium to dry, um, you know. And this is just a real, uh, real soft tobacco. This is a Virginia Ready Rub tobacco. Um, it's got a lot of strength to it, but the flavors are not off the charts, right? So uh, the strength is there, uh, but but it's not just so strong in flavor that it it kind of uh, bowls you over. So um, I like this. That there's a there's a odiness to it, um, and um, and and some of that sharpness that I think you really appreciate in certain Virginias that uh, that make this uh, make this good to smoke. So right, give it a smell. This. Oh, interesting. This this um, I mean the tin note very much comes across as like a, a a tobacco lover's tobacco. Yeah, no, that's that's a great way to put it. Yeah, I mean ag again, if you're into super you know superlative flavors, think uh, you know rich English blends or. Uh, you know, aromatics that mm -hmm. uh, are dripping with sweetness. I mean, this is probably not the blend for you, but uh, but if you if you like subtle tobaccos that have lots of power um, and and are real clean, um, and and again, if you're a lover of Virginias that like kind of the sharpness that comes with a real solid uh, Virginia um, that kind of makes you work for the flavor, I think you'll I think you'll be really pleased with this. All right, let me ask you a question because I mean, this is. I you know, I've, I've been opening tins and enjoying them, both smoking and just smelling. And whenever yeah. it comes to just opening tin smelling without ever smoking it, there's always like a a whiff of something I get that I'm like, okay, that's that's pipe tobacco. You know what I mean? Like there's there's all of these other different flavors that's, and textures that's, and everything else. That's raisins. But like, <laughs> not the raisins though. There's just, it's actually, it's not fruity in the slightest. It's just something that's like, I don't know if it's burly per se or what, whatever it might be, but there's just something in in this tobacco that I recognize. I'm like, okay, this... And maybe it's because it's an English, or maybe it's because it's an English. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, it's not an English. It's a Virginia blend. All right, so so maybe but, it's, but that's what I'm saying. Maybe it's yeah, because it's a Vir Virginia it, just, blend. Just the Virginia blend. Yeah, yeah. Th there's something about you know um, just kind of soft tobaccos that don't have a lot of flavoring on them. That um, uh, you know, if it doesn't have Latakia in it, it can kind of lead you into that oaty, grassy, hay-like flavor that I think this is majoring in right here. So okay, that's probably so some of that's that. It. That's probably some of that stuff you're getting, particularly that kind of oaty. Uh, mealy flavor you know there's almost a uh, uh, I don't know I think the oats really shine through uh, there so uh, again this is a tobacco that on the flavor profile it's not really gonna you know knock you out but what what I love about ye old sign and and it's very much like the is the guy on the tin uh, it is the guy on the tin but but all, also the uh, balconies number one this is a this is a a, 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 li a liquor a whiskey that really makes you slow down to enjoy it so not only not not just in the way pipe smoking makes you slow down but you know as some tobaccos you really do have to sip slowly and deliberately mm. to enjoy them and mm. in small quantities to enjoy them and i feel like the the yield sign really makes you uh do that because it's a tobacco of the same nature this is not something you're going to hot box something that you're going to puff real quickly on chasing those big clouds of smoke you're going to sip this tobacco you're going to sip it um it's going to give you a real clean uh, mealy flavor uh, that I think kind of majors in some of those things that um, it, that just kind of bring you back home, you know. And so when you pair it with the balconies, um, it's just real. Um, it's real balancing. It's just real, real balancing. I think the superlatives of the balconies, number one, uh, which are so fruit, cherry, uh, you know, toffee, uh, peat in your face. Uh, you know, they're really uh, kind of kind of the the edges are kind of rounded off nicely with the Dunhill yield yield sign. It's a, it's interesting. Okay, so I've I've got a dumb question, and I realize this is I dumb. have a dumb answer. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> good, good, good. There are no stupid questions, just <laughs> just stupid people. Well, and I'm glad to play the stupid role, even four years in, and asking this kind of like dumb question. But so, all right, so is I mean, is it that Virgi like is it Virginia tobaccos that I'm that I'm really kind of picking up on? Then is that kind of the consistency? And maybe I just I need to kind of 
like say like, oh, I'm smelling this again. And you could be like, oh, it's Virginia or, oh, this is no Virginia. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, with this particular one, it it could be. Let, let me ask you this. Yeah. If you were to like just describe totally on smell, someone hands you a Virginia tobacco, what's the smell that comes to mind instantly for you? Hay and vinegar and and oats. Interesting. Because maybe, it, I mean, like the vinegar. Yeah. And, and And sometimes, and sometimes tea. Actually, a lot of times tea. Yeah. Your palate. My God. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't know. You think of like, yeah. you think of green tea, right? And the the kind of sharpness that it hits on your nose and then it immediately kind of has this mellow, mellowing effect. I, yeah. I think I, I get that with a lot of Virginias, you know, and again, this can kind of fade into your, you know, your tasting notes as well. But um, I, I think from the tin note of it, that's kind of that's kind of where I would go with okay. it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Well, it's uh, it's it's a great tobacco pairing. I mean, honestly, the the thing that really sticks out to you instantly when you see this tin is just the branding of it. Um, you've got this dude, uh, that is definitely from kind of the revolutionary era. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's he's rocking a wig back when that was cool. Yeah. Uh, and uh, no offense to those of you who are rocking wigs. Uh, it also it's the the ye old old with an e. That's right. Uh, Signed with an E. It's a tobacco that fits ye old country squire very well. Very well. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, just, I'm shocked. This is the first time I'm seeing this. Yeah. Interesting. You've been, you've been, you got like a, you got a stash somewhere. You've just been kind of, <laughs> this is like your, your personal stash. Great pairings, by the way. Yeah, man. Re really, really thought these came together well. I was, uh, was pleased with these. And um, yeah, of course, the Dunhill Yield sign, uh, tobacco that would go well with a lot of things, but, but certainly the rich, bold flavors of that Balcones number one. Um, man, I think it's a, I think it's a solid choice. Absolutely, man. Well, Hey, so the great thing about whenever you're doing any kind of pairings is it's, it's really about kind of the flavor and kind of what you're able to pick up on. Uh, you've got a palate that you bring to the table that most of us could only like wish for, like hope for, maybe some of us are striving to get there, but it takes a lot of practice, man. And when you practice, you got to drink a lot of, uh, a lot of whiskey. You also got to smoke a lot of tobacco, That's right. a lot of different kinds of tobaccos. And you're not going to want to do that with the pipe that you've set aside specifically for the Latakia, certainly not with the ye old sign. For something like that, you got to have something where you're going to get a good, fresh, clean smoke every single time. That's right. And of course, I'm talking about the pipes from Missouri Meerschaum. That's right. That's right. We love Missouri Meerschaum pipes for tasting, for getting to know uh, your new tobaccos in your cellar, things that uh, you're unaccustomed to that you want to try. Uh, maybe comparative notes if you're ever taking notes, if you're one of those people that wants to get into more of the, um, you know, fineries of uh, describing flavor and things like that. A, a corn cob pipe from Missouri Meerschaum is uh, is is the way you want to go, and they have just have such a nice variety, which is great. Um, man, uh, right now they've got a lot of uh, gift packs going on, so you can buy. Dude, their uh, branding is awesome. It's too. so cool. Yeah. It? I know, I know. It, it, you can buy, uh, you know, packs with multiple pipes in them that. Uh, straight and bent pipes, uh, particularly the uh, diplomat or the country gentleman. Uh, last week, I believe we talked about the Dagner poker, which course, is uh, yeah. which is real popular. Um, you got that some, freehand, which looks a lot like a Christmas tree. It does. It does. It looks like a like an upside down Christmas tree. Just saying, yeah. if you want to <laughs> if you wanted to deck deck the halls in the right kind of way, a Missouri Meerschaum pipe's the way to do it. That's right. Um, and it, it, there's just so many uh, great items from them that. Uh, that make good gifts. We we have also uh, a, a lot of folks this time of year uh, like to buy just little pipes for stocking stuffers. And that's when we sell a lot of the uh, Missouri Meerschaum short stop and the Missouri Meerschaum miniature pipes. These are pipes that have small bowls, um, you know, but are just perfect for pocket pipes, right? Mm -hmm. I just want to just want to try that tobacco. Uh, give me give me you know ten or fifteen solid puffs. That's that's kind of what I'm looking <laughs> for. Uh, you know, the the bowl right, is, right, right. the bowl is perfect because it's just big enough to fit your tamper in, right? I mean, that's and that is a toolkit pipe. That right is a toolkit yeah. pipe. It's a very <laughs> precise instrument, right? And uh, and man, these are pipes that uh, you know are very inexpensive, very affordable. Uh, that you'll that you'll certainly enjoy and have a place in your lineup. So uh, we highly recommend them. Tell our friends at Missouri Meerschaum uh, that you heard about them on Country Squire Radio and uh, and tweet and Facebook in those pictures. We'd love to love to share those back out of you smoking your Missouri Meerschaum corn cob pipe. Absolutely. All right, man. Pipe question of the week. This is going to be really interesting because we got. Um, I, what's what something between an essay and an article? Okay. You know, like it's, okay. it's it's a lot. It's a lot. So we got a we got a big email. Did, did in. you give us the abridged version? Perhaps? So Jay Lau actually sent in a large email. Jay is a a big fan of pipes and pipe tobacco, but he is yeah. also a big fan of cigars as well. Oh, good. And so okay. his love of these kind of two premium tobacco products had his 
kind of the, the, the gears turning a little bit. So he sent in, uh, I think, I think he initially intended to send one question, but it evolved into several different questions. Very no, good. Very stream of thought kind of uh, email, which by the way, Jay, William Faulkner would be proud. William Faulkner. I'm the exact same way. <laughs> I'm the exact same way. So what I did is I actually kind of carved up, what I did is I actually carved up his uh, his email into a couple of different questions. Okay. Kind of grouped some of these things together, uh, help him out a little bit. So, Jay, uh, we got one of your questions this week. We may answer uh, the rest of them in future episodes, so stay tuned for that. But here we go. He says, hey, guys, I have a question of the week. The question is about pipe versus cigar tobacco. What is the difference between cigar tobaccos and pipe tobaccos? Specifically, what is the difference between the leaf very uh, – varietals varietals uh for cigar versus pipes and mainly the question is really about you know which tobaccos uh are why why are certain tobaccos set aside for cigars versus pipe tobacco yeah man great great question and um yeah you know this is one of those that um is going to speak in some way to, to the technical side of the stuff right i mean you could go into uh, you know, uh, the plant biology and all that kind of thing. Here. <laughs> botany, but, uh, but yeah, botany and, <laughs> yeah. And, and everything else. Yeah. Which we are certainly not, uh, uh, not qualified to talk about, but, um, yeah, a, a real good question. People do ask that occasionally like, well, you know, why can't you just roll up tobacco, you know, pipe tobacco and smoke it like a cigar right, yeah. and then it tastes like a pie, you know, and it's like the, so you have these different, uh, you know, different things and, um, you, you know, that come through. So, so, uh, pipe and cigar tobacco, of course, these are, these are different plant varieties. Um, cigar tobacco, uh, again, grows in different areas of the world. Right. And, and occasionally you'll have crossover leaves. Uh, the, a real popular one right now is the Kentucky dark fired burley that we talk about, um, quite a bit, you know, that dark fired Kentucky tobacco, uh, it's making an appearance in some Drew estate, uh, tobaccos. We've got a La Aurora a cigar that's got some of that in it. Uh, and, and then also you'll have uh, the occasional cigar leaf, uh, you know, popping up in a pipe tobacco. You know, mm -hmm. we had this Anduyo tobacco mm -hmm. uh, uh, come around um, that I, I believe the folks um, at Lane uh, introduced into a, a tobacco that we talked about one time. Um, you know, uh, also Maduro tobacco, different cigar leaf that just comes from uh, Connecticut broad uh, or Connecticut shade uh, grown tobacco, things like that, um, that are, that are introduced into pipes, but they, they are different varieties. Cigar, uh, tobacco is much, uh, much fuller, uh, more powerful, bold, um, pipe tobacco has a lot more natural sugar, um, it, delicate flavors, uh, you know, they're gonna, uh, produce less smoke, um, it, Typically, uh, you know, the the smoke is light enough uh, on some pipe tobacco to be inhaled, although we never really, um, you know, uh, it, it encourage that. But it is a lot. It, it's kind of like kissing cousins to cigarette tobacco, right? Some of that burly leaf, uh, Turkish leaf that goes into cigarette tobacco that has more wispy uh, flavors to it and, 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 a, and a more wispy body. Um, we see we see that a lot. So um, really, it's just a you know, without getting technical, because frankly, I don't know the names of the different plant, plant varieties and things like that. Uh, you know, cigar leaf, it is, is grown, uh, in a different part of the world. We're kind of talking about, uh, that, uh, you know, the tropic area, you know, uh, think, you know, Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, obviously Cuba, uh, you're seeing a lot more cigar leaf now come from places like, uh, Brazil, uh, Peru, uh, Cameroon, of course, uh, you know, places in Africa, um, you know, but then also a lot of pipe tobacco. You, again, traditionally, we've got these areas in the United States. So, uh, you know, Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, Maryland, Virginia, uh, the Carolinas, uh, and then, of course, you know, strange leaves like Louisiana Perique and things like that. We've got North American leaf here um, that has been transplanted to other parts of the world as well. And so, you know, in places like Cameroon, for instance, or, um, you know, um, uh, gosh, I'm flaking on one of the names of the other African countries, but a lot, a lot of these tobaccos now are grown over in that part of the world also, um, where they've, they've kind of found a nice, um, you know, other places, you know, to make the economics of, of pipe tobacco work out over there too. So, um, but these leaves are just fundamentally different in that, yes, they're both tobacco. Uh, they both uh, produce, you know, have nicotine content, uh, but they, they smoke very differently. And I, I think a lot of that is due to the, uh, to the natural sugar that's that's available in both the different leaves. So uh, pipe tobacco, again, going to be more wispy, um, naturally sweet, delicate. Uh, you know, those cigar varietals are just so incredibly powerful and bold. 
um, that uh, you know they just make a they just make a different uh, a different smoking experience. So mm. um, yeah, wish I yeah I don't don't really can't tell you much more than that. Uh, would love to know if if we do have any listeners out there that know more about you know the uh, technical differences between cigar tobacco and pipe tobacco. But I think. Um, you know, on, on average from a 30,000 foot view, that gives you a good idea. So, um, you know, that, that's why when you smoke a cigar, the experience is just so different uh, than when you smoke a pipe. Uh, even if it's unflavored pipe tobacco, you know, the tobacco that you smoke in a pipe, it's just, it, it tends to be uh, just a little more delicate, a little mm. more uh, nuanced. Uh, with cigar leaf, you have so much more power. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I think that's why a lot of folks are attracted to cigar leaf. That's good, man. Yeah. Well, it's a great question and it's yeah, part really, of, really good question. Part of a, a, a series of upcoming pipe questions of the week uh, related to kind of cigars and pipes and, and kind of where they, uh, where, where they overlap and, and why they don't. And, and that's, I think it'll be kind of interesting to see as we yeah. go through those. Yeah. So again, great question, Jay. And if you've got a pipe question of the week, send it in show at country squire radio.com. Quick fire questions. Ow! All right, man. These quick fire questions come in from our friends at thispipelife.com. Thispipelife.com. More on them in just a minute. Uh, these are actually from uh, MS Eden or Miss Eden or Miss Eden. Okay. Uh, one way or the other, you know who you are. <laughs> uh, the topic is Shakespeare, tragedies, comedies, and histories. Wow. I'm about to just make a fool of myself because I probably won't know much of any of this. Well, normally I do, but I've been drinking. So but you have we're been. on an even play. play. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. You ready? Yep. Hamlet or Mickey B? Did you, you really called Macbeth Mickey B? Yes. Uh, okay. And we're, you should turn around three times for even saying that. We're gonna we're gonna roll with that. Theater lore, of course. If you say that the Scottish play uh, uh, on stage, it's extremely bad luck. But for some of us, the world's a stage, so you can never say it. I I am so happy right now because you, you're you're just loopy enough to. <laughs> To, for it to be obvious, but but you're still holding it together, and and, and it's just and it's just so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna go with Hamlet. <laughs> gonna go with Hamlet. Uh, I will go with Hamlet as well. You kind of have to. Uh, all right, this is this is a really good one. Uh, Midsummer Night's Dream or Much Ado About Nothing? You know, I I don't remember a lot about either of these, but I really I, I do remember enjoying Much Ado About Nothing uh, a lot a lot more. Yeah. Did you watch the? Uh, the did you have to watch the movie for school? Yeah, with um, um, what's her face? It's going way back, so I don't remember. Any, but I, I remember watching the movie. Yeah. She was what was that? She was like in a bunch of different, like really like acclaimed movies, but nothing popular. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I know the kind of I know the kind of thing you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. So um, that that's a tough one. But Midsummer Night's Dream is has been so uh, vastly applied in a lot of different uh, uh, you know, you know, you, we were talking before about kind of inspiring content, like yeah. content inspires content. Uh, it's it's hard to find something that has inspired so much content uh, other than Midsummer Night's Dream. Maybe uh, Casablanca in the more modern era. But okay, I'm gonna okay. go. I'm gonna go with Midsummer Night's Dream. So you talk about inspiring content, and what would inspire content more on Country Squire Radio than something called Much Ado About Nothing? So, <laughs> Wait, um, that's really what the uh, the podcast should be named. Yeah, that, that, you, you might be right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and then finally, Henry V or Julius Caesar. I'm gonna go with Henry V here. Um, I, I remember again, had not super familiar with a lot of Shakespeare, but uh, remember enjoying Henry V. So we'll uh, we'll go with that. I'm going to go with Henry V as well, only because I had to memorize parts of Julius Caesar when I was in high school. Yeah, and it drove me crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, you know, and it just I don't know. I like British history, so I I don't know. Henry V would probably bring out a lot of things that. Uh, that I would enjoy, but well, I, 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 I kind of feel ashamed that I am not more familiar with these things. Now I feel like I need to yeah, man, go, go do fun. some reading. Yeah. Well, I mean, Henry, Henry V, I mean, you get three more Henry's in there and you got the, uh, the Anglican church. That's, uh, the way you, where you're at. Yeah, that's right. Uh, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. Henry the eighth. I am. I am. Henry you know the eighth. I am. I am. Yeah, that's all. I got married to the girl next door. She's been married seven times before, and everyone was a Henry. 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 <laughs> all right, I right. could have had a Willie or Sam. Or Sam. <laughs> oh man, we just sang on Country Squire Radio. That's it. That's that makes good. me happy. Yeah. All right, those are some great quick fire questions. <laughs> and hey, good. if you've got some quick fire questions as well, you can actually send those in through the forums over at this thispipelife dot com. Uh, thispipelife dot com is an awesome community. Not only do you get a chance to meet people on the forums, other pipe smokers, but you get to find out what's going on in the industry broadly, uh, and not just in one of these like you know. Uh, text-based ways of just like, here's yeah. an article about such and such. No, they are very visually stimulating. It's it's really a website and a community
community that is made for the modern age. So check them out, thispipelife.com. And when you do, use the code CSR uh, when you sign up. It lets them know you heard about it on the show. It helps us out a little bit. We really appreciate it. CSR when you sign up at thispipelife.com. Listener feedback. Ah. Uh, yeah, man. We got some great listener feedback in. Um, I'm going to have you read this one from Jay Freedy. <laughs> Do you need me to read everything from yeah, that, here that's, on out? That's, yeah, that's, that's okay. how it's going to go. Okay. <laughs> Man, this Texas stuff, they don't mess around no, with it. No, it's solid, this. dude. It's really solid. You know, even, though, he's, he's in a, even as I'm um, kind of sitting here sipping on it, uh, just the residual flavors, it just it really does coat your mouth with this kind of kind of soft, sugary smokiness. I, Deep I don't know, in the really... heart of balconies. Yeah. What is the first letter of feedback, John Davis? Uh, <laughs> it's like, please move on so we can uh, get, get off of this topic. Uh, hey, Bo and John David. This is from Jay Freedy. Uh, hey, Bo and John David, you guys should do an episode on lunting. Uh, we really we really should. Um, you could interview Scott Beedler uh, with the International Lunting Society. That's www.lunting.org. That's L-U-N-T-I-N-G dot org. Uh, might be kind of fun and different topic. Anyway, just a thought. So do, do you know what lunting is? Now, you have explained this to me before, but uh, re-explain it to me. Lunting is 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 strolling with your pipe. Right. So it's, wa it's walking with your pipe. But but with the walking cane? No, you just you, you just walk. But on a hiking trail? Y you can. But but it's not not required. But it but it's not required. You can you can lunt in your neighborhood. Can you lunt with your dog? Y you can lunt with a frog. Could you in a bog <laughs> <laughs> after eating a hog? Oh yes. wow! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lunting is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a thing. It it, it is. And there's a uh, the, the the International Lunting Society. Uh, check it out. Lunting.org. This is uh, this is a thing. I'm telling you, it's there. There's plenty of uh, plenty of opportunity for you to get exercise and enjoy your uh, your favorite pipe tobacco at the same time. All right. So so let me ask you this question. I mean, we lunting we do a lunting episode. Why haven't we done that? Look, if you're going to say we can walk and smoke our pipes and we're going to build a show about that, then I think we can get the barbecue pairing. <laughs> like, I think I've, this is my this is my whole deal about the lunting thing, because this has come up. People have actually brought no, this have. up before. They have. Uh, there is the Lunting Society, which is uh, vast. And, and, and I think, if anything, perhaps the Lunting Society is one that deserves its own episode if not necessarily the act of literally just walking while you're smoking. Your <laughs> Again, no judgment, just saying that I have been criticized for even merely suggesting that we pair pipe tobacco with barbecue, I, which seems to have more variations and seems like a series unto itself to some extent. And you just want to... think of what happens more often, right? Think, think of, I mean... The, the, Deep in the heart of barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can, we can pull it off. What we got for our iTunes review? All right. From uh, Bullfellas73 on iTunes, he says, uh, hanging out with the guys from uh, Country Squire Radio. These guys are informative, fun, and they speak from a place of peaceful passion. Peaceful passion. I like that. I like that. I like that. Uh, they don't ramble on for an hour and a half. Are you sure? <laughs> uh, just loving to hear themselves speak. Uh, they this podcast is not only a great way to learn about pipe to, pipe smoking, but feel, uh, but I feel as if they are sharing uh, their passion and interest and hanging out with some decent dudes while doing it. So, oh, uh, man, bull fella, thanks so much, brother. That that's really kind. We, um, you know, don't want to uh, be one of these uh, groups that just sits here and pontificates. We're uh, I think I think we are approachable, kind of like the uh, kind of like the Westland uh, single mall. You know what's beautiful about the word decent. It's one of those words that you don't hear that often. So when somebody like says it, they mean it. Like there's like a punctuation to it where it's like, yeah. What what matters about the fact they called you decent is that it's true. Yeah. But when you really think about it, wow, decent. Wow, that's such a good way to put that. But the reality is that decent just kind of means like, eh. Well, no. Like passing. No, it, it, well, like it, if it, 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 it has can. a new meaning in the modern era. It that's can, what I'm but saying. there's a really. I, I think you. I can't remember how you just said it, but there's a real honesty about it, right? Right. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. I mean, so you know, someone. Oh, you're fabulous. So you're fantastic. Or over the top. Yeah, we superb, go over the top. Right? Like it's crazy. Like, yeah. Man, they are, these are decent people. Like the, these are these are decent people. Man, that's what I, I feel honored to be called decent. There's power in kind of the more humble terms like that. Yeah, that's just really. Yeah, good. I think that there's something there. How about yeah. that? How man, about man. how about that for some pontifica pontification? Which uh, is an overstated word in of itself. It, it, it is. It is. <laughs> Lit, liter, literally. Right. Literally. literally. <laughs> Bullfellow73, thanks, uh, thanks for that. Absolutely. Well, hey, and if you've got uh, some feedback for us, we love getting those iTunes reviews in. It's a great way to help support the show, and it doesn't cost you a dime to do it. But 
If you are willing to spend a uh, dime or perhaps a few more to help support the show, head over to patreon.com slash country squire radio, where you can do that there as well as join the international pipe club, uh, where it's uh, now over a hundred members strong. Well, at least over has, has had over a hundred members sign yeah, up. We, as we've well. had, we've had a hundred people sign up. That's yeah. right. And so we really appreciate those of you who are doing that. Uh, again, you can find all that information at countrysquireradio.com, where you can also find our social information, where you can follow us throughout the week. I'm at The Real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore Country Squire. And of course, uh, I am at The Real Bo York, and at Squire Radio is the show as well. Again, all that information available at countrysquireradio.com. Well, you know, at the beginning of the show, you said you were coming off a bachelor party, but uh, you got a bachelor party coming up here soon in the next couple of uh, weeks. Do what? I? Do we have? Do I mean it's it's coming? I don't think so. The question is, is I, whether I or not. I hope it's not coming. The question is whether or not we podcast. No. The bachelor party. No. There's a strong contingency that really wants this to like like to be chronicalized. Like be, like to be an event of some sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe you know yeah, what it is. You know, you know the only thing that would happen if they would they'd be sitting there around watching us play like apples to apples or something. We're going to hire We're a guy. old dude. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is what was going to happen. We're going to hire a guy and we're going to strap a GoPro to his head and he's going to be the representation of the listener. So the listeners can come along on your bachelor party and we'll, we'll, we'll like, we'll give the guy a name and everything and it'll be like, Joe listener. Well, just guy. One of the way that he's, he's there. The thing is you would probably do that just for fun. So we don't have to hire anyone. <laughs> you want me to wear a GoPro to my head no. the entire time? Well, I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, it'd be a little. It'd be a little weird in pictures. It, it's gonna be weird anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if if we're gonna be there, Bo. If we're gonna be there, perfectly normal in the modern era for somebody to be hanging out with your group with a camera specifically to capture everything. I feel like that is very today. That that's a that's a today thing. Yes. Right. See, I'm not crazy. <laughs> I'm just ahead of the curve. Something like that. That's what the Joker said. <laughs> anyway, well, hey, man, this has been a lot of fun. I, I always great, love Squire I had Select. a great night. Me too, man. You know, it's even better because, you know, typically whenever you got a Squire Select, you got a tobacco talk right around the corner. It's Christmas season. So will you see some Christmas tobaccos next week? Stay tuned to find out. Uh, survey says more than likely yes. <laughs> but we'll That's make, right. That's one way right. the other. Should be a good one. So, hey, man, let's go have a night. See you, brother. All right. Thanks, guys, so much for the live show. I didn't spill. You did not yet. I dropped my phone though. I was taking a picture and then I dropped. My you did phone. drop your phone, but I mean, you know, to be honest, you have had a couple of uh, healthy had, pours. Had, of, a, had, a, had a few drinks of this. Yeah, of the that, that's good. That's good stuff. Yeah, I, you know, really, I, really, really tasty. I Randall, think, um, man. Yeah, R Randall said he gave that to us in Texas, in and that Texas. is uh, incredibly kind, Randall. We're uh, we're very grateful for that. I didn't say this on the show because I wasn't one hundred percent sure on this because I was going to say that Randall is the opposite of you because he's from Mississippi, but in Texas. I can't remember if Randall, if you're originally from Mississippi. He and I went to the same college together. Uh, at, oh, uh, really? It's at, hard to yeah. imagine that anybody would go to Mississippi College that's not from here. But at yeah. the same time, I met my wife, and she's from Grand Rapids. No, that's right. College, that's so. right. Yeah, no, that that's it. It is possible. Yeah. Dude, great. Yeah, we, we appreciate it a bunch. It was so good. And, man, I mm. highly recommend. Actually, our our good friend Jeremy Wolf in the uh, NCL. Jeremy! Is listening. What's up, brother? And uh, and he gives us a shout-out for uh, for drinking some, some of Seattle's own Westland whiskey. Uh, just really really tasty whiskey uh and and i highly encourage you to buy it this is such a such a good um a good single malt that it really it really is approachable it's yeah. like one of those that okay you want something that uh is easy clean um you know uh, i don't know just just has enough sweetness to it to keep you interested very sippable i i, I love it it's, it's, it's easy great, great stuff it's breezy it's beautiful it's color girl it's westland uh, single Easy breezy, is it an easy breezy beautiful color girl? Cover girl, cover girl. <laughs> I messed it up. Isn't a hair dye? Is that not what that is? Yeah, that's it. Okay, yeah. I thought it's, just, no, it's, it's not. It's not. You're being corrected by the the future misses. It's like some uh some kind of mascara or something. All right, show's over, guys. We gotta Bye. go. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, y'all. <laughs>